And Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. And he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be destroyed. And the men of Nineveh believed in God, and they proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least. And God saw their works, that they were turned from their evil way. And God had mercy with regard to the evil which he had said that they would do to them. And he did it not. Jonah chapter 3, verse 5 and 10. Because it is living in the structure of sin, rightly so, because St. Paul teaches that the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 Jesus likewise is challenging our present generation to repent and to sin no more by obeying the will of God taught by the Gospel and the Magisterium. Catechism of the Catholic Church number 398 teaches that God created us to divinize us. This is possible only if we follow God's will and God's love who is divine. Unfortunately, in number 405 of the same catechism of the Catholic Church, we are told that even after baptism, we are still inclined to concupiscence, which is nothing but the propensity to self-will and self-love, rather than following God's will and God's love. St. Mary Magdalene de Fazi says that to do self-will and self-love is to be Satan in human form. When we reject God's will and God's love and follow our concupiscence of self-will and self-love, instead of being supernaturalized into the realization of God's image, we become demonized in Satan's horrible image. Lent is the time given to us to make a conscious act of repentance and in humility return to the Lord. Jesus, who is the way, the light, and the truth, leads us to heaven. Satan, on the other hand, is a liar, a murderer, a deceiver, leads us only to hell. It is not difficult to go back to the Lord. We only need to make a good confession and live a life united with God. Let's take St. John Bosco again as our example. In 1844, a woman who was in the last stages of tuberculosis was confined at St. John Hospital in Torino. Known to many, this woman was an ill refute and was accepted to die in despair. She was not only in and out of countless affairs, but also guilty of serious sins, and as well responsible for the financial harm of many people. Worst of all, she had not approached the sacraments for many years. She vehemently resisted the pleas of the hospital chaplain and nuns who tried to convince her to make amends with God as a final recourse. She spurned the efforts of the holy priest, Father Cafaso, and even hurled a vase at him for being insistent. Concerned that this woman was to die unrepentant, Father Cafaso asked Don Bosco to see her. Don Bosco agreed. One day, Don Bosco dropped in at St. John Hospital and went to the ward where the woman was. 
The dying woman saw him and was surprised that Don Bosco passed her bed and made way to the patient on her left. Then without even glancing at her direction or saying a word to her, Don Bosco walked up next to the patient on her right and began to speak with the patient. Annoyed at being obviously ignored, the dying woman yelled at Don Bosco, aren't you going to talk to me? Why, certainly, Don Bosco said, patiently. Pulling up a chair next to her bed, Don Bosco sat. Say a good word to me, the angry woman demanded. Yes, I'd like to, Don Bosco began. Let's talk about confession. Confession, the woman snorted. It's been a long time since I went to one. Well then, make another one. Don Bosco smiled. The woman's face fell. She revealed that that very morning some priest wanted to hear her confession, but she drove him away. She was very mean. Finding an opening, Don Bosco quickly told her to be sorry for the incident and put her conscience in order. Before the woman could reply, Don Bosco began praying, God be in your heart. But immediately the woman cut in, but I'm not ready for confession, she cried. That's why I gave you my blessing, that you may prepare yourself, Don Bosco replied. The woman was now obviously uneasy. He told Don Bosco, I don't feel like it. Later, when I've recovered, I'll go to confession in some church and town, or maybe even here in the hospital chapel as soon as I can. Don Bosco was not convinced. Do you really believe that you will still recover? He asked the woman. Do you want to tell me something from the doctors or in God's name? Finally, the woman relented. No, not from the doctors. I'd rather hear something in God's name. Kindly but firmly, Don Bosco then said, In God's name, I tell you, that in His mercy, He is granting you a few more hours to think of your soul. It is now four o'clock in the afternoon and you still have time to confess your sins. Receive the Holy Eucharist, the anointing of the sick and the papal blessing. Don't fool yourself any longer. Tomorrow you'll be in eternity. Shock! The woman could not speak for a minute. Don Bosco would not let her go. I told you, I'm not speaking in behalf of the doctors, but in God's name. At these words of Don Bosco, the woman cried, Eternity, eternity, the thought frightens me. The poor woman made her confession that very night and died early the next day. Every time is an opportune time to repent and go to confession. Referring to the scripture, Saint Basil said, Thou hast ordered all things in measure, in number, and in weight. Wisdom 11.21 meaning that God has fixed for each person the number of the days of his life. This means that we can never be too sure of tomorrow. We meet an accident, had a heart attack, we're paralyzed. What happens? We no longer have the same life as before. How can we in this condition go to confession, hear Mass, even pray the rosary if we no longer have the use of our limbs and our faculties. I repeat, 
now is the most opportune time to repent and go to confession when we still have the full use of our faculties and senses. After confession, Jesus lovingly warns us to sin no more. Begin a life of sinless and grace-filled lifestyle, which Our Lady of Fatima called the communion of reparation lifestyle, summarized as care, C-A-R-E, C for confession, and also examine of conscience, followed with a praying, the act of contrition. A, adoration daily, at least for one hour. R, rosary prayed every day, and if possible, three times a day, the joyful, sorrowful, and glorious mysteries in the life of Christ. For those who are diligent, four times a day, include the luminous mystery. E, Eucharistic sacrifice to the Mass daily with proper disposition to receive Holy Communion. To amend one's life means to have 180 degrees turn around from faithlessness to godliness, from hopelessness to trust in God, from egoistic self-centeredness to charity from pride to humility. St. Gregory said, He who has promised pardon to penitence today has not promised tomorrow to sinner. Homily 12 in Evangelium. Let us pray. O merciful God, to the message of Jonah to the Ninevites, you bid us in our times to turn away from sin, go to confession, and believe in the gospel. As we hear your voice today, help us not to harden our hearts, as in Meribah, when they challenge you and provoke you. A humble, contrite heart, O God, you will not reject. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.